So we've returned with our samples. We've kept everything on ice. This is about 12 hours after. And what we're going to demonstrate here is just how we sort through these insects when we return. And typically I just empty the material in small amounts into the pan. And then we can just pick some of this, uh, these hosts out of the pan in smaller subse subsections of the sample. We're going to keep everything on, on ice so that they can stay a little bit healthier. This is your first act. opportunity, other than in the field, to just see what we have here. And we, we know that uh, we're going to have some larval aquatic insects for sure. Sometimes you'll have adult isopods as well. But what we have here is just a visual check um, with nice, nice fresh specimens. We have here, for example, a stonefly. Stoneflies have two cerci, and the, as, as stoneflies mature, they often they will have uh, wing pads that are slightly darker, and you can see two dark sp spots on this on this ad, uh, this nymph stonefly. Mayflies, on the other hand, will have three cerci. Generally speaking, these are these are mayflies here. Generally, also the 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 mayflies will become darker with maturity, but it's a, that's a generalization. So what, what you do initially is just try to determine, uh, get a handle on what you have in your sample. Here we have, for example, mayflies, and we have these trichopterans, which are in little cases. Here's a larger trichopteran over here. These often will, uh, as they're sitting here, you'll see their heads move, uh, pop out, and they'll start to pop around. Other things in here that are of interest that I haven't shown you yet are uh, mi uh, midges will, will look like little legless creatures uh, with, to the naked eye and they'll often move around in a jerky motion. Uh, again, um, what one can do is just simply pick these up and put them in their containers at this point. They can be containers or they can be petri dishes, whatever is convenient. If you see anything in here that is apparently big jawed or predaceous, uh, you certainly will want to get those out of there and uh, and separate it or just discard it. They generally, these fungi generally don't inhabit uh, the guts of uh, predaceous larval aquatic insects. But at this point, it's simply um, removing your specimens from the container. These This can be done with forceps or I I like to use little cut pi plastic pipette, uh, pipettes, um, dis disposable uh, units and these these are quite handy for just uh, by suction picking up the material the, the insects from the from the pan. You're going to want to do this uh, in relatively cool conditions. You don't want to have this heating up as this will cause undue stress for the hosts. It's always better, if possible, to to remove the living hosts and dissect living specimens as opposed to dead specimens. As you're as you're picking through your sample, some things to watch for also are um, as these as these larval aquatic insects are maturing, uh, they're they're still immature, but they shed their exoskeleton with each molting cycle, and there are, are a number of molting cycles or molts that that make up the immature life cycle of these hosts. And I want to point out two things: as th when they first emerge from a molting session or a molting incident, they will be very faint, like this stonefly here, which has very little pigmentation. The other thing to watch for, and so this is a very recent molt, and, and oftentimes these do not have very mature fungi in them. The second thing to watch for are the shed exoskeletons themselves from these hosts, such as this mayfly sh shed skin here. In the search for the fungi, the, the shed exoskeleton can be a very good source of I believe, a very good source of zygospores, which is the sexual stage of the fungus, which is often very critical to a complete understanding of, or a complete description of the, of the fungus. This is a second bag from this, this collection, and I want to show you another kind of host, suitable host. This larger dipter in here, here's a, a small midge which we had collected earlier, the second one of this, these small midges, but you can see the incredible size difference here. 
both of these are suitable hosts for gut fungi. And, uh, and again, we have some mayflies, uh, various sorts of mayflies here, but all of these will be good, good uh, potential hosts for gut So we've finished uh, with this preliminary sorting of our collection materials. What I wanted to show you also was what, a, what the black flies look like from the twig that we collected from the stream yesterday. And I've got them placed on the filter paper in this petri dish. Uh, various sizes and probably different species here. Um, some of these will be immature stages of the same species, others will be different species, different sized specimens. I wanted to get you uh, get, give a feel for just how many you can find on even just a small twig and uh, the, the difference in shape and size and how, how they move. The other thing to note is that I've got it on the filter paper here which I think is, is a better means for them to maintain uh, their stability and viability with this higher oxygen content situation presented by the, the thin layer of, of film of water over top. The second thing I wanted to show you was how we've got these other hosts separated. We can see here the mayflies and trichopterans separated in one dish. The stoneflies that we found at this site yesterday seem to be possibly predaceous, but I'm, they're just small enough it's difficult to tell. But just in the just in case they are, I've separated them in a separate container. And the third thing I wanted to show you is just that we've got the the mayflies on the dipterin separated in this in this third container. And what we'll do now is place these on ice, hold them on ice, take them back to the lab um, for the dissecting. These should be kept cool, either on ice or in a refrigerator, until they are dissected. And even when one has them out of the fridge, they should be maintained as, as cool as possible for and, and kept at room temperature for the minimal amount of time just to, re to remove any kind of undue stress to these hosts.